All right. In week 12 in the Physics 122 course, we're going to have a test. And as we're getting ready for a test, we're going to do some review topics, which help us bring some different pieces together that we've talked about. Now, earlier in this section um, of the course, we talked about electromagnetic waves. And we saw that electromagnetic waves come in different wavelengths, different frequencies. And you know that the high frequencies have higher energy photons, and the lower frequencies have lower energy photons. And today, we're going to be looking at a particular slice of the electromagnetic spectrum, the thermal radiation part of the spectrum. Now, I and you and everything that's about the same temperature as us emits vast quantities of thermal radiation. And it's a wavelength of about 10 microns, as opposed to visible light, which is about half a micron, so significantly longer wavelength, significantly lower frequency, significantly lower photon energy. And so as a consequence, the physics of the interaction of matter with thermal radiation is extremely different than the physics of the interaction of visible light with matter. For instance, I'll show you an example. I have this piece of plexiglass here. Plexiglass is transparent to visible light. If I put this in front of my face, you can see me. But it turns out it is not transparent to thermal radiation. If you look on our thermal imaging camera, and here I am on the thermal imaging camera, if I take this piece of plexiglass and put it in front of my face, you can't see me. You can't see me at all because this piece of plexiglass does not transmit the thermal radiation. It absorbs it and it re-emits it. So the thermal radiation I'm emitting does not make it to the camera. Now it turns out other things that we're accustomed to thinking of as being opaque aren't opaque to the thermal radiation. I have this black balloon here, an invisible light. If I put this in front of my face, you can't see me. But in the thermal radiation part of the spectrum, if I put this balloon in front of my face, you can still see me very much. And the reason is, the, the, this is a very, very thin piece of latex. And it's thin enough that the thermal radiation makes it through. But inside here, there's black pigment. Well, the black pigment absorbs visible light, but it has nothing to do with the thermal radiation. And so you can see through it in the thermal radiation part of the spectrum. Now, the most important thing that we have to think about that absorbs and emits thermal radiation is greenhouse gases. And this is really, really important on a planetary scale right now. And there's a lot of discussion of it. And the two most important greenhouse gases are carbon dioxide and water vapor. And I'm going to set this little can of gel fuel on fire here. And as it's burning, it's turning the hydrocarbons in there into carbon dioxide and water vapor. And so there's combustion gases that come off of here. And if I hold my hands near it, I can actually feel the thermal radiation from those gases. The carbon dioxide and the water vapor are greenhouse gases. They absorb and they emit thermal radiation. So check it out on the thermal camera, and you can see a plume of gases coming off of there. It's a huge plume of greenhouse gases. And I can feel them up here, and I'm feeling not mostly the warmth. I'm feeling the thermal radiation they emit. So when we put these gases in the atmosphere, they emit thermal radiation, and they shine their thermal radiation down on the Earth, and it keeps the Earth warmer. When the Earth radiates energy out to space, it gets absorbed by the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and re-emitted, and it's that re-emission that keeps us, keeps us warm. Now, that's a good thing. If we didn't have any greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, we'd be a frozen ice ball. But we're in a situation now where greenhouse gases though are good, but we might have too much of a good thing. Now I'm going to show you another gas that works as a greenhouse gas. So first I'll go ahead and put this out, and that's very toasty. And it's a little scary, actually, because you can't see the flame very well from that. This is a little can here, and this is a keyboard duster. Well, it's actually what's inside here is a really uh, low boiling point alcohol. And if I spray it in here, the alcohol is boiling. It's very, very chilly vapor that comes out of here. Whoa, that was kind of exciting. A little straw came up. So I got a container full of very, very chilly vapor. And it turns out that vapor is also a very powerful greenhouse gas. So I'm going to put my piece of plexiglass back here, take my container, and then I'm going to pour it. And in visible light, what you see is nothing. But in the thermal radiation part of the spectrum, you can see I'm pouring a nice big 
stream a very cold vapor because the vapor there is a very, very powerful greenhouse gas. It absorbs and it emits thermal radiation. And so you see darkness. You don't see me through that screen of vapor because the thermal radiation I emit is absorbed by that vapor. So if I take this, and I pour it like so, you can see the radiation I'm emitting gets partially absorbed by the gas that's going in front of my face. So these are two examples of greenhouse gases, and the greenhouse gases are incredibly important to the rest of the story that we're gonna tell in class. Quick recap. Thermal radiation is a form of electromagnetic radiation. It's got waves of electric and magnetic fields, and the frequencies that the electric fields oscillate at are exactly right to oscillate the molecules and the heavy gas that I poured out of the container and the combustion gases here. That's what makes these gases greenhouse gases. They're transparent to visible light, but they absorb and they emit thermal radiation, much like the plexiglass, transparent to visible light, but absorbs and emits thermal radiation. This is kind of a greenhouse plastic, and it's the flip side of the black balloon, which transmits thermal radiation but does not transmit visible light. And that interaction of electromagnetic waves with matter and the way electromagnetic waves work and the way that you get different frequencies and the photon energies, those are all part and parcel of the type of thing I want you to be thinking about as we're warming up for our test.